Senator, so great to have you on the program. So I understand you were born and raised in Washington State, moved, Thank you. moved to Canada, you got married in Canada, and then moved with your partner to Ireland when homosexuality was still criminalized there. Can you have fathomed, Senator, being in the position you are now, and Irish society being in a position to vote on legalizing gay marriage? Uh, just, it's, it is an extraordinary moment in this country uh, when Anne Louise, uh, who's actually Irish born, and I married in Canada uh, over 13 years ago now. We didn't, we had, we had no idea that actually we'd come to this point in Ireland where it would be put to the people whether or not our marriage there would be recognized here. We did uh, take a case when we returned uh, to, to the country here to see could we get it recognized. We lost in the High Court. We were on our way to the Supreme Court, and in the meantime, it was the Taoiseach, who is the prime minister of our country, ultimately decided, well, let's just put it to the people. So it's been an amazing uh, campaign. Many of us have been out for the last 14 weeks on the ground having conversations with hundreds of thousands of households, talking to them about their fears and concerns, and how Ireland could be ultimately a more compassionate, fair, and generous mm -hmm. country if people say yes. Speaking of concern, Senator, the Archbishop of Dublin said this would, quote, fundamentally change the philosophy which underpins cohesion in society. What is your response to that? Um, my response would be uh, that I would respectfully disagree uh, with the Archbishop that, in fact, what's happening here is we're asking people to simply extend marriage to same-sex couples, to extend the happiness uh, that comes with that. Uh, we believe that marriage matters, family matters, that it is the base of a stable society. So, indeed, if, in fact, more people can marry, if the Irish people say yes, that's got to be good for Irish society. A day before this vote, Senator, what is your sense of how it's going to go, and is it keeping you up at night? <laughs> I didn't sleep much last night, actually. It is an extraordinary moment. I've just come from an event where our Taoiseach, our Prime Minister, and De Kenny, and our Tanishta, our Deputy Prime Minister, Joan Burton, both of them uh, heads of our uh, coalition political parties who were there gathering with those who fought so hard on the Yes campaign for our final, our final gathering, uh, sharing with each other how do we think it's going. We feel quietly confident we feel quietly confident now that it's actually going to pass. And even though the polls have started to narrow a little bit, never once has it gone below 65 percent, and that the Irish people, who are freedom fighters and justice makers and are compassionate and fair and generous, will actually say yes, and we will become the first country in the world to do it that way. It seems like this is personal for you. It's personal. It's personal. And Louise and I, when we got married, there was no conversation, no public conversation about marriage for same-sex couples. When we came back, we were very much alone. We started a case. We eventually got supporters working with us. And then it's just blossomed into, as our former uh, Tanish to said, Eamon Gilmore, who was also there, the civil rights movement of this decade in Ireland. Do you think this uh, referendum is going to have an impact, no matter which way it goes, on other countries, including the U.S., having similar debates. Well, what I know is, uh, uh, clearly it will. What I also know is that even when we were running our case in the High Court, what was going on in the United States, both in the courts, uh, as well as the advocacy of people like GLAAD or the Human Rights Campaign, we were in touch with these people, helping us to try to understand how to advocate for the issue, what were the legal issues at stake. Largely, the legal issues are extending equality to all people so that they can marry the person they choose to love. So there is no question in our mind that that not only will we experience freedom finally for all the citizens in this republic, that what this, this signal sends to LGBT people throughout the world in countries where they are still criminalized, where it is a death penalty to be openly gay, that this will, please God, set off a wave of freedom and pride and encouragement to other countries to at least be more compassionate and tolerant and ultimately to offer full freedom to their LGBT citizens. Irish Senator Catherine Zapone joining us from Dublin this morning. Thank you so much for your time.